Greetings, this is Texan Math, and we are looking at the last of a group of 10 items that were on the STAR 8th grade mathematics assessment. This is item number 48. It says, which group of three squares will form a right triangle when joined at their vertices? This item was answered correctly by 46% of the students. That means 54% missed it. Uh, this is a classic Pythagorean theorem model item, so we're going to work it uh, using some color and uh, using our formula chart and having a conceptual look at the Pythagorean theorem. First of all, you'll notice that on the mathematics chart that is provided in the materials with the test, this is a tear-out chart for the students, the Pythagorean theorem is on the bottom of one side of this chart and it says that a squared plus b squared equals c squared. Well what I'm going to do is I'm going to write the formula and I'm going to draw a picture of what it looks like when I have the formula modeled. a squared represents a square with side length a So a squared, I'm going to show with a rectangle or a square with side length a. And notice I'm highlighting the whole thing, squared, plus b squared. Let's see, I have another square. Typically a is smallest, b is next, but you know we've, we can talk about that. They don't have to be a and b are interchangeable in the formula, so a squared, b squared can be different lengths, but I'm going to, or they could be the same length. I'm going to go ahead and make a b that's larger. So this b squared represents the square, and then c squared is the square whose side length is the hypotenuse of a right triangle. Now I'm just going to sketch this if you're teaching this to your students, I would encourage them to sketch this while you're learning the concept, at least the initial one, and then uh, maybe they won't need to sketch this one again. Okay, so our goal is to find the squares that fit the model. So let's take a look at item F, the answer choice F. You'll notice that this square has side length 3, and this square would be my A in a squared. Its area is 9 because the area of a square is just like the area of a rectangle and you can refer, refer to that formula if you need to on the chart. Uh, that's base times height. Well the base and the height in a square would be the same so this is 3 times 3 which is 9. The square here would be the next largest square which is my b so b squared would be 7 times 7, that's 49, that's the area inside, and then c squared would be the 12 times 12, that's 144, and that represents the green. So the question is, does this form a right triangle? Well, if it does, then a squared plus b squared must be equal, and that's real important, to c squared. This area plus this area must equal that area. So we want to look at 9 plus 49. Does that equal 144? And it does not equal, so I'm going to put a not equal. Way too small, 9 plus 49. So I'm going to cross out answer choice F. It does not create a right triangle. Okay, let's look at G and we'll do the same. A squared would be 6 times 6, so that would be my 36. Again, I'm letting A, I'm just arbitrarily choosing the smallest one to be A. The only one we have no choice on is the largest one must be C, but the A and the B are interchangeable. The B squared will be the next largest, so I'm going to go ahead and make 9 times 9 B, so this one is 81. And then C is 12, so C squared is 144. So the area of the largest square is 144. 
Oops, I used the wrong color, didn't I? Let's go back and make that one green. There we go. Okay, so let's take a look. Does 36 plus 81, does that equal the square of the largest, which is 144? Well, hopefully you know 6 plus 1 is 7, so there's no way to get that 4 for that last digit. So this is not equal, and the answer is incorrect. Okay, looking at H, A would be 8, so A squared is 64, B is 10, so B squared is 100, and C is 18, oh my, well, you know, I think we actually tell our kids to memorize that one, but I never did, so I'm going to multiply that out. So we're going to do 18 times 18 to get this area. So let's come up here and do that. Let's see, 18 times 18. Okay, 8 times 8 is 64. 8 times 10, that's not a 1, that's a 10, is 80. And this is not a 1, it's a 10. 10 times 8 is 80. And 10 times 10 is 100. And then I'm adding up and I'm getting a 4. And let's see, 80 plus 60 is 140. So that's 220. So the 20, you'd put the 2 in the tens place for the 20. And the 200 would be added over here to the 100, giving me 300. So this area is 324 square centimeters. Let's take a look and see if this one works. So does 64 plus 100 equal 324? And the answer is definitely not. In fact, this one doesn't even make a triangle because if you took 10 and 8 is that going to even make a triangle no because 10 and 8 is 18 this would fall flat if you made the triangle out of that one hopefully you're doing those sorts of activities with your students so they can see that doesn't even create a triangle we could have avoided this whole exercise here alright let's look at J we're gonna do 8 times 8 again so this area a squared is 64 B squared, well I happen to know that one is 225, they may need to multiply that out. I think they have to memorize that one. And they probably need to memorize this next one too, but I don't know that every student does that. So I'm going to go ahead and multiply one more time, like I did before, to get my 17 times 17. Okay, 7 times 7 is 49. 7 times 10 is 70. 10 times 7 is 70. And 10 times 10 is 100. So I have 9 ones and then 70, 70, and 40 is 180. So that's going to give me an 80, an 8 here in the tens place for 80. And then a 100 added to the 100 that's already there gives me 200. So I now have 289 for the area of this largest, 289 square centimeters. So let's see. Hopefully this one works because none of the others did. 64 square centimeters plus 225 square centimeters equals 289 square centimeters. That is true. That is a true statement. So that tells me answer J is correct.